You unlock this door with the key of imagination. <laughs> Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. So let's do this thing. Oh, welcome to the La Book Podcast. This is episode 39, 26th of July, 2016. Now, uh, let's see. With me tonight, of course, is Robert. I've just got a new lamp and I'm going to use it. God damn it, Davis. Hooray! <laughs> Thomas, I again just couldn't be asked to do my bed, so I left it all messy. Busby. Hi. And Patrick is with us as well. Uh, he is a uh, a Hema cast instructor for gonna get this wrong, Liate Adela Bellica. How's that, Patrick? <laughs> it's close enough. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. It's Liate oh. Adela Bellica. I'll I'll go with that. He is also um, the um, the word. Oh, words. Words are good, Stu. Words should come out and flow from you. Uh, he is also the producer of the Hemacast podcast. Uh, so he's with us tonight. So welcome, Patrick. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Glad to hear that. Now then, uh, in tonight's show, when I scroll up um, at the top there, right, Patrick from Hemacast is here. Profiles, profiles, profiles. And tonight's episode is brought to you by LARP In at larpin.co.uk. Go across to them for all of your LARPing needs. So let's start then. Welcome, Patrick. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Now then, um, Thank you. first of all, Thank you. tell us a little bit about Hema. What is it? First, the first thing I thought of was some kind of medical disease thing. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Because uh, yeah. when oh, you type yeah. in hema to begin with, right, all you get, especially if you look at podcasts, is hematology, hema something or other that's to do with blood. Then there's other things. And like, eventually you, you, you get to Patrick's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> European. What it is is a recreation of Western or European martial arts from a. Since we don't have a living tradition like Western martial arts do, masters who the information and interpret them and try to make it into a living martial art again. Okay. That's kind of what. Yeah, pa Patrick, I'm, I'm wondering so, whether or not you should actually just kill your video because your, your audio is coming up. There we go. Right, try, try that. So tell us again, there we go. Wh what is HEMA? All right. HEMA is historical European. It's It differs from Eastern martial arts like karate and Kong, that there isn't a living tradition. You know, when you talk about karate, you have the 10th level black belt who learned from the 10th level black belt who learned from the 10th level black belt who came up with the thing yeah in western martial arts because of the way warfare changed over time the long sword fell out of favor so the people who taught the long sword wrote down books and now 500 600 years later we're going back to those books to refigure out how they used to fight back in medieval and renaissance times. Okay, right, yeah. So, Hema as in this surgeons. Right. Where years we have seen exponentially more clubs have been showing up around the world for quality in for the past 25 years right and he five plus years 
So, so now we so, have yeah. So, how many, how, how many, up. how many clubs are are there now around the world? I could, I can conservatively say, probably over a thousand. Now, I know in the uh, British Isles, there's over a hundred. Right. In the Eastern United States, there's almost 200 same again for the western united states um and uh, there's just so many clubs in so many different locations um and you can find these clubs by going to uh Lions website and they have a club finder where all these clubs just go in they punch in their information say this i'm in this city in germany yeah. and you can go there, search for them. Uh, I think you guys just checked yourself, and you found a couple <laughs> in uh, your location. Yeah, we actually found two that are that, that are actually fairly close to where we live, um, which uh, surprised me because um, I've been doing things like stage combat and uh, and role playing and things like that for a good portion of my life, and. Yeah. I'd never seen any of of these clubs and what have you, so I'm genuinely shocked uh, when I found that there are two on my doorstep. So we'll we'll definitely be having a chat to them at some point. So oh, so awesome. yeah. so how did how did you actually get involved in this then then Patrick? How, you know what what started you down this road of oh look sword. <laughs> well, obviously, you know when I was loved fantasy role playing and all that kind of stuff so i just had that love for swords growing up yeah. yeah but it was about a year ago a little over a year one of my friends contacted me and said hey i can't do kendo anymore but i found this this thing this european martial arts this long sword fighting do you want to do it with me and i said yeah of course <laughs> why wouldn't i <laughs> Odd, oddly enough so we checked just... out a couple of other clubs <laughs> this is and, this and, this, uh, this is decided to start our own. Yeah, this is this is sounding very reminiscent of of of, of myself and Andy. Uh, we're bored. Uh, what should we do? Um, oh look, there's a combat course going on in a castle not too far from us. Let's go do that for the week, you know, uh, and and things like that. So yeah, I, I I definitely feel your pain. See these friends? Who needs them, Patrick? You know, they just get you into all sorts of bother. <laughs> Oh, yeah, great trouble. Um, <laughs> and it's led me down this fantastic path where I go to a HEMA event and run into a couple hundred of my closest friends, whether I knew them before the event or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Def definitely. We, we, we definitely know, know that, that side of things. Um, so you started up this club. Uh, you're, you're now an instructor as well. So... Uh, just, just tell us a little bit about some of the things that you do um, it within within the club, you know, on, on a nightly basis then. And nightly being a pun that I did absolutely intend. <laughs> All right. So for our weekly, our weekly classes, week, we have one on Wednesday nights at 7.30 and one on Sunday afternoons at like 4. And that's just because that was the schedule that worked out for us. Other clubs have different schedules some go for longer some go for shorter for us we've just found it was great to have a two-hour week on wednesdays we start with just a brief warm-up yeah um just to get our bodies active and moving because it's martial art and then we go into uh basic cuts basic guards how to hold the sword how to cut with the sword yeah and then we'll go into a set of plays or a set of actions and reactions that we got from our source material. Okay. So somebody attacks, the other person will defend and counterattack. And that could be as simple as if you take, hold it up, up it's like a baseball bat and swing it down on a person's head. Yeah. You know that's a very basic idea of a of a strike that we can set up to defend. We'll block it, we'll counter it by grabbing their sword, hitting them in the head, or any of a few dozen things. Okay. We practice it with a with a partner, and then slowly we get to we put on some protective gear 
and we practice doing it at speed in a sparring like manner. So we're right. actually start fighting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, me, me, yeah. me, me, and like then me, me, like the end of the class, we do some, <laughs> some free sparring, um, as compared to directed sparring, we were, where we're trying to do yeah. whatever we sing. Yeah. So we do some free sparring and at the end of it, do a little bit. We also do, uh, wrestling and dagger class. So. There's this entire historical wrestling, historical dagger attack and defense that we also focus on in our club. Other clubs don't really focus on that, but it is part of that historical art. So, so each and same every format, club, we just... So, yep. so each and every club is kind of like individual compared to, you know, like... So they do their own little things within each club. Uh, more or less. Uh, there are some... Guys uh, in, there's a couple of clubs down in uh, Maryland and D.C. that are part of the XKDF network, meaning that they sort of started from the same teachers, the same books, same source material. They have a, a curriculum that each, so a lot of those clubs will teach the same thing on, or slightly different nights so they can go to different clubs. Um, Cool. But there's a lot of variation between. There's a lot of historical masters. Uh, to again, not be too reductionist, but there's basically three masters that you can look at. There's the Italian master Fiore de Liberi. There's the German master Johannes Lichtenauer, okay. and the late German master Joachim Meyer. Uh, Fiore wrote his books in 1410. Lichtenauer and the explanations of this poem between the 30s through the late 1400s, early 1500s. Meyer wrote his book, uh, The Art of Arms, in about 1570. Okay. So there's a 200-year time period that you can pull this, this long sword tradition from. And each school or another or a combination to work out of. Uh, All right. My school okay. decided to go with the Italian tradition just because that saw the most benefit too. Yeah. Uh, uh, Constus Hectens with Lichtenauer. Um, and it's partially, it's mostly personal, but I'd say it's also just a geographic happenstance which one you wind up stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, which, which it's only because. Where, wherever you are in the world, that's probably that's probably the style that you that you you're going to be learning and fighting in, yeah. Yeah, so your club's going to pick a style. They're going to pick some reference materials, and they're going to instructors. They're going to work through those and try to understand them. That's what I'm picking up on. Yep. So that sounds great. That sounds yeah. very cool. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and for example, the the next closest club is an hour and a half drive away. <laughs> An hour and a half drive, two hour drive, yeah. three or four hour drive. So that's what I kind of mean by that geological happenstance. Mm. Yeah. People who are near where I'm at, they're just going to happen to learn Fiore because we're the school that's in the area. Yeah, yeah. Unless they want to drive further to get to a German. <laughs> well, well, this, 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 this is what happens when you decide to live in a bloody big country. Well, so, as that's all I'm going to say. You know, we've we've got a yeah. lovely little island. You can probably get from from end to end in about f uh, four to six hours. You know, with a with a good car. <laughs> yeah. And traffic. And and traffic. Yeah. Okay. You know. And traffic. <laughs> yeah. Um. Right, so so this is this is actually quite. This fascinates me in the sheer fact of um, there there must be a way to tap this into reenactment clubs, uh, etc., who want to learn the uh, the correct learn way. Learn how then. to use a sword the way it's supposed to be. Used. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it, you, you know the yeah the way. I mean, you put a, man, a sword in a man's hand, and it's not necessarily going to swing it in anything remotely like a a good way. No. Um, yeah. So yeah, so you, this must be valuable if you, if you. Do you have contact with Patrick with sort of uh, USA reenactors or re Renaissance Fair enthusiasts to 
who don't want to learn it for the art's sake or for sword fighting's sake, but for just to make themselves better at what they do. Just to hit people. Yeah. Uh, I've involved in a couple of Renaissance groups near me. People will stop by and they'll learn some things. Uh, but the biggest issue with uh, like Renaissance clubs and reenactment clubs isn't necessarily that they're trying to reenact the art of fighting so much as they are trying to present it safely. The difference between stage combat and yeah. combat. Mm. You know, I can okay. swing a sword in such a way that will keep you safe, but that's not going to show off the way they used to fight. Yeah, uh, yeah. And vice versa. I can swing a sword very accurately, very intentionally, but that's not necessarily going to be the safest thing for a live reenactment. That's the, um, true, yeah. Okay, that, that makes a, a, but, a, a, a lot of sense, yeah. Um, I, I, actually, yeah. That, I, I, but, that remind me of the time, if you don't mind, um, as you and I took some yeah. uh, karate-style uh, classes before LARP, which was vi really, really useful, except to me it's quite dangerous for LARPers for a short period of time. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I understand where you're coming from, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we took up karate katana classes, so we went up to a big LARP and then realised that we were probably not wielding the swords in the manner we should be doing for, for a LARP. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I was listening to your podcast, uh, It Comes in Barrels, right? And you were yeah. complaining yeah. about that, the tippy tappy combat <laughs> yeah. in LARP. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just yeah. Tap, tap, tap. And I've been to LARPs where that was in the rule set. And, yeah. you know, if you get hit with the weapon, you get. Like, it hurts. It's supposed to bloody to hurt. Out. Yeah. <laughs> it should have some resemblance to a sword fight. Mm. Uh, oh, so yeah. I think. That's just my personal opinion. I, if I'm going to do a lev, you know, if somebody's going to attack me with a sword, I want to feel when they hit me, and I want to yes. make sure that, you know, it's, it's not this cheap, I'm going to tap you at the absolute distance that, if this were a real weapon, would never even <laughs> scratch you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. it it might yeah, it does. might it might cut the skin very slightly if you happen to be naked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Most of the time, you ask to. Oh well, you know, I've put on a shirt tonight. What more do you want? <laughs> Just a shirt, though. <laughs> uh, so so yeah, yeah the. So when you go back then, where, where on earth did you find these texts, uh, these tomes almost, uh, mm. to, to show you how, how to do all this? How, how on earth did you start researching this? Is it like Indiana Jones? You went into a tomb and you found them there and uh, <laughs> got them Close, but it's more like uh, Jones going into the library. <laughs> well, it, it seems silly, but no, there are these huge personal collections throughout Europe these books these ancient books that have this information in it okay um, so we don't have to go to the personal libraries we actually have through the entire uh community and came up with this website called the wicton hour okay uh it's a it's a on the these historical european man ah. so on this website they actually have posted um, scan of these books. Okay. So you go there and you can research Fiore de Liberi. And in addition to a biography that, as much as we know about him, it, it, it all these images and texts from his books, of which he wrote four, ah. that we know of. Or you can go there, you can look at the pictures, look at the words, and start to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, the whole bunch of secondary sources. So mm -hmm. our primary sources are these historical manuals. They're the ones that you read and it's this. Um, and I shall grab you in this way and most assuredly throw you to the ground like a foul villain. Just a paraphrase of one of the things that Fiore says. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, because we all speak like that. You know, I. 
Yeah. Well, it, you know, translated from Latin or Italian, but yeah. uh, then you have these secondary sources, mm -hmm. which are the people yeah. who for the past 15, 20 years have been reading through these manuals, interpreting them, presenting them, and then doing modern uh, image capture pictures and a of the text where they write it out, they publish it in a book yeah. and sell it. A couple of the bigger ones for for Fiore are Guy Charette's Armazare and uh, no, not Guy Charette, uh, Robert Charette. Sorry, Mr. Charette. And <laughs> Guy Windsor's uh, Duelist Companion and Art of Arms Dagger, Basic Longsword, and Advanced Longsword. Okay. Uh, then there's also some German sources. So they, there's a secondary source that you can read and a whole bunch of YouTube back out as well, put out by all, all these different, uh, understand the material and interpret it, video record it, post it to YouTube and say, this is how we think a Zwerkow or a Zornahow should be done. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, this is, you know, and then as people yeah. get, yeah. It's gen gen genuinely Sorry, fascinating. Yes, uh, you know, generally fascinating in the sheer fact that that these um, historical documents uh, actually exist to begin with that uh, I've never heard of. Um, and uh, I tell you what, Rob, we should definitely uh, tell Mr. McCurdy um, about this. I think he would be uh, genuinely fascinated um, yeah, to actually, no, no, to actually no. see this. I'd like to see, if, I'd like to see if, how involved <coughs> he is. And if he's not, why not? Yeah, yeah. Why? Get your impression, Mr. McCurdy, the friend of ours. He's a he's a stunt he's a stuntman. Actually, he's a swords he's a stuntman who specializes in being a swords master. Um, awesome. He's, he's in a he's we've been to a number of classes with him. Stu spent quite some time training with him at one point. So this is all stage combat, but it's all he he's an incredibly good teacher. Oh yeah, yeah, he really is. Um, so I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely send send a link to, to your stuff as well o, o, over to Kev, because um, mm. I, I think he'd be genuinely interested in this. He's the sort of guy that that when he sees something like this, goes, "Ooh, let me look at that," <laughs> you know, uh, because he's just gen genuinely fascinated with anything and everything martial arts anyway, um, yes. and and knife fighting. He's a, a, a Oh, just don't get into a knife fight with this guy. That, that's that's all I'm I'm gonna say. Uh, <laughs> that's a but, good general rule. Gen anyway. Yes, a generous, a good general rule. But you know, you know, <laughs> you you you'd probably be be okay getting into a knife fight with me as I probably drop the knife uh, at some or point. Hand it to you. Hand it to you. Goes like, percent. yeah, is this yours? Um, <laughs> where where Kev will absolutely do you over. Um, so. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely gonna let gonna let Kev know about this because, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, he he may be in contact, Patrick. You never know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. send my way. <laughs> That's cool. Is there is there anything else you you want to you, you want to tell us about Hema uh, and 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 what you do? I mean, obviously you've got a podcast as well, uh -huh. uh, yeah. which is called the yes. he the, the Hema Cast. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear with the podcast right. and when it airs, except sorry, sorry, All Patrick. Right. <laughs> so a few months ago I was driving off to an event and I was listening to podcasts as I was you know, going through so many different rates just find a good one to stick with. So I download podcasts and listen to them. And I did a search for, you know, HEMA and podcasts and couldn't find anything. Yeah. Which I thought was just a crying shame. So hmm. I decided I'd start up a HEMA focused podcast. Yeah. And it was very quickly accepted, very readily accepted by the HEMA community. Cool. And hmm. now I go out to, whenever I go to an event, I bring all of my recording equipment with me and to people at these events. And they're, I've interviewed people who have been in HEMA for six or seven months, and I've been interviewing people who have been in HEMA for 17 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting this nice broad spectrum of people to interview. Yeah. And really just starting to get that community feeling. Cool. Some of the clubs that are in the middle of nowhere in this huge mm. country. Mm. Yeah. 
And yeah. in addition to that, because there's so many like YouTube videos teaching how to do things, I don't focus on the techniques. I focus more on the topics. Mm. So this yeah. past weekend, we had an event called Long Point. It's the second largest HEMA gathering. The largest is Swordfish in Sweden, and I think they meet in like December of this year. Or okay. December winter. of every year. Winter, that's a good idea. <laughs> yes. Well, like, it, like it, it makes the backdrop more, dr more, more dramatic, Tom. It makes the backdrop more dramatic, all right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Tom, three, yeah, nothing three, says... three <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, nothing says sword fighting like winter in Sweden. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you've 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 just but come back from 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 the one event. From the one event, and while I was there, I interviewed uh, the guy who ran the Wickton Hour. I interviewed uh, a couple of guys who have won tournaments and have performed very well with swords and with daggers and i have a couple of interviews lined up with the people who won the ring and tournament for example fabulous and we started talking about things like uh what is hema um we were talking about things like one gentleman actually came with a group of professors from a university down in i think north carolina yeah. and they were doing heart rate studies on the sword fighters Okay. So they were watching okay. you know, how quickly are people moving, how fast the uh, heart rate rises, and all that kind of stuff. So we have that entire historical aspect of you know learning the masters, and we have this modern sport mm. aspect of you know, the sport medicine. You know, kind of oh. like how the football players will do stuff and learn. You know, how was the best way to train? Yeah. Okay. So we're getting a lot of this information, and. By having this podcast, I'm able to talk to these people and get this information from, you know, the two who were at the event. Yeah, yeah. Out to yeah. the greater HEMA community, who, you know, might not have made the, made it to the event because it was in Baltimore, Maryland, and they lived in San Diego, California. You know, a couple thousand miles away. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Do, do you want? So <laughs> I mostly started the podcast to yeah. get that information to the bigger community, mm -hmm. so that. You know, it's not that it's isolated. You only know about it if you go on to this one website. This one out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's 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 ex exactly the kind of reason why we we started this podcast as well. And I was bored. <laughs> Never no. get bored. But it's exactly our, our, just so much like our story. There was we started that book. There we were looking for resources that were. I talked a lot about top, over the topic a lot, and there just weren't that many or any, and a video in any podcast. So yeah, um, here we are, and cer certainly yeah. none none that were as funny as this one. <laughs> 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 and 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 of course none that actually has Hugh Laurie on there as well. Yeah, can I ask you a question, Patrick? Have you? Uh, there's recently been a video sure. surfing around the internet uh, about a ca called Can You Move an Hour? About a gentleman who's trying to recreate a knight's training regime from, I think, yes. about the 15th century. Have you seen that? And I did see that, yes. Do you, do, you have, do you have a view on that one, Patrick? Uh, I've, I have personally not worn the, the, the harness. That's mm -hmm. what a lot of human practitioners will call it harness because it's called harness effect in or yeah. armored combat. I've not personally worn it. Yeah. But I've watched it. I've watched it into it, move around in it. Yeah. If you can dance a jig outside of armor, you can dance. A, you can really move well. Okay. Because, uh, you know, you, you, you always envisage it as being very large and clunky and very difficult to move in. You envision it to be this very large, clunky thing because, you know, knights were the images. Yeah. You know, you could hit them and probably not hurt them because they're encased in metal. Yeah. Yeah. But really, they had to be able to move because if they couldn't move, then somebody behind them, the adage of stabbing somebody or getting into the chinks in the armor, places yeah. in the armor. 
yeah, is yeah. a real thing because mm. have those soft places to move, then you know you can get toppled over and that's that. You can't get back up. It's not going to be worth it. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah, there's that. There's that entire idea that when you're in armor, you're in metal, but when you look at how much a standard har- mm-hmm. it's going to weigh between 40 and maybe 80 pounds uh, yeah yeah I, i'd say 25 to 45 kilograms yeah okay. uh, this is actually uh, less less weight than we send our current army troops, troops into in, battle yeah, with. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. actually you're absolutely right there uh, um I thought you told you wears an awful equipment now. I know because yeah. I've I've put on the full kitted soldier <laughs> uh, uh, stuff uh, when when I was up 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 at one one of the army base bases the one time where where lads were being uh, trained ready ready to deploy to get mm. back back into fitness and and I asked I said can I put that on <laughs> and the bloke said are you really sure. <laughs> I said, and I said, yeah, because I, you know, I need to know. I need to know what you what you boys go through. So mm. he lifted it up effortlessly. I might add, right? Uh, I slipped yeah. in. I slipped into the pack. Uh, I then almost toppled over like a freaking turtle. Um, <laughs> and then, then he handed me uh, the rifle plus the ammunition that goes with it. Um, and uh, then I suddenly realised. There's no way I could possibly do this now. Put me back on the minibus. I'm going home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and and they and they will also do a, you know, um can't call it an assault course anymore. Uh, an obstacle course with this kit on as well uh, yeah. to simulate different Yeah, I mean, seriously, yeah. they, cuz they, they, they you know, in in battle they've got to get over obstacles yeah. with yeah. the cargo so hang on a minute let me just take me pack off put me gun down let me get over the wall oh shit all my stuff's over there um yeah. you know they've got to take it with them so so yeah so if if you think back then with with the armor that um knights used to have to wear don't forget that a lot of the times they were also sat on horseback mm. um to yeah. to take the fatigue I suppose out of it. Let the horse do the running. Um, I'll do the chopping and the slicing, um, or running through someone with a with a, a very large pole, that sort of thing. Um, then yeah, mobility had to be key, mm. which I suppose mm. put a lot of areas in that armor that were vulnerable. Yeah, but well, you got to keep in mind have... that uh, knights had squires. Oh and inventory don't so you know <laughs> yeah yes yeah that's a, it's, it's only the officers dear boy only yes, the officers, yes, only the officers. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> look batty boy go and get me that good lad good chap there you go <laughs> <laughs> trust me i know plenty of them <laughs> um but yeah, so yeah, that's, that, that's really interesting. Do you know what? I uh, thank you, this Patrick. I, I've actually found this this fast fascinating, and something else for me to try. I think is the uh, is the other the, the other word on that. I, I do have a question for Patrick. Um, this, obviously, because this is a LARP All right. podcast, and mainly LARPers will be listening to this. If you could kind of like yeah. say one thing really for a LARP to get a LARPer interested. In Hema, you know, like to kind of like make them kind of like push forward to look into it more. How will this be beneficial for them in LARPing or in everyday life? Because you know, wielding a sword in everyday life is pretty handy. Um, I must say, yeah, have, you, okay, have you have you say? have you not been to my house? I mean, Jesus. yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how Karen and I well, sort of I so say... sort of sort out uh, sort out our arguments in this house, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there are a couple of different things I would say. First, I would say to anybody organizing a LARP, if you really want to improve the immersion in a LARP, especially if you're talking about a fantasy LARP, anything that actually involves a sword, mm-hmm. uh, make sure the rule sets for your combat requires some intention in the combat. So you can't just stand with the sword, you know, point down in front of you and just and get you know take all their life away now have yeah. some intention in the rule set 
Yeah. Probably. Where you, you actually need to yeah. swing it. Obviously, there's the safety aspect of the boffers and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want more immersion, especially in the battles, you need to have some sort of intention. You yeah. know, even if you make sure the head is off limits, you know, swinging the sword 45 degrees. So if you hold it straight out in front of you, off to your right slightly, have it swing that little bit of distance, changes it from this entire idea of tap, 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 and then, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to go lay down and pretend That's to die, right. to... To oh my god, this is this is combat. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it really helps for that immersion, in my opinion. Mm. Um, so that's what I would say to the users to get them interested. To the LARPers themselves, I'd say to just check out a most um, most groups that I've come across. Have, yeah, you want to check it out? Come check it out. See if it's for you. Yeah. yeah, and if 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 nothing, go yeah, check it out first. Yeah, if nothing, yeah. if no, if nothing else, it's it's going to help in your in your delivery of the theater. Then, yeah, mm. the the the, the theater of the combat in that in that respect. Yep. I, I mean, um, I, I I certainly know when uh, myself and Andy went um, on the the stage combat course and what have you. Um, the one, the one thing that we were taught in was, uh, was, um, rapier for instance. Um, so we were able to sort of take that then and in certain laps, uh, choreograph a, a decent fight routine, which was staged theater, uh, to drive a plot point along. Yeah. Um, mm. yeah. so, you know, if you've got, if you've got so, some training behind you, at least you know what the what the emphasis should be on the swing, rather than the uh, tap 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 tap, which I ignore anyway. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that's a great idea. If you can learn what movement looks like, really looks like, feels like, yeah, then you can as a player. Then you should be able to sell the blow. But and I, I'm going to make an assumption here that it's really nice immersion. Uh, one of the things I particularly love in LARP is when so the combat going down, somebody does a really well structured blow, but somebody the receiver sells the impact. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um sells uh, and plays out what it would what it might look or feel like. Yeah. And the more you can learn about that, the more immersive you're going to get. I I mean I, I know what I can get away with with Rob. Rob yeah. knows what he can get away <laughs> with with me. Right? Yeah. Um in in that in that respect that if one of us is backhanding one another the other one's going to going to going to sell it um yeah. you know or striking with a pommel or whatever you you know they they're going to sell it with the sheer fact jesus christ i've just been struck with a pommel um yeah. you know that that that's that's going to hurt or as rob frequently does with me bounces me off his shield um <laughs> but i don't get away with it but you say safely <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, um, in, in, in which case I will sell it. I will sell it as Jesus Christ. I've just been, you know, run into by a freaking steam train with a shield. <laughs> you know, um, so, yeah, I, I, I would I, I would say for, for any LARPers that, you know, uh, listening to this, then um, we'll we will in the show notes put a link up uh, to the site that will show you where your closest club is. Um, yeah. Go along and and get some training, you know. Experience what combat, real combat is, so you can deliver your 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 performance of the LARP combat better. Make it look good, you know, rather than some of the videos you see where you go, "Oh God, do we do that? <laughs> is that what we look like?" <laughs> no, I don't even ever seen videos of of some lap com of a, okay a lot of lap combat spots, but some of them they they, 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 they don't look good. They do not <laughs> yeah. look good. Yeah, no. yeah we, we are our own, our own embarrassment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, thank you very much for that, Patrick. I think we're going to move on a bit now. You are more than welcome to hang around and uh, and stay within the chat if you want to. Not a problem there. All right.
Right, thank you very much. Okay, dokie then. Cool. Uh, looks like this is probably one from Rob, is it? Uh, uh, found a yeah, post on... This is my fault for quickly re- reading on Reddit again, which is never a good idea. <laughs> okay, so uh, Rob has found a, a post on Reddit asking questions about bows. So to the team, what do you look for in a bow? Personally, I look for a string and yeah. wood and it to long, be bent and, and, and taut. That's what I look for in a bow. Yeah, I asked for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. There's, there's not much more to a bow. Um, no, what I think what fascinated this person was assuming the bows for lab had to be plastic or... Ah, right. Driver class. And I was going, hang on a minute. There's not, I mean, okay, apart from the values and popularity of pipe bows. Yeah. Because they're really cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the labs I've played with over the years, people have been working with really nice wooden bows. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, I, I, I would say to me, it depends on the LARP. Yeah? Yeah. If it's a futuristic LARP, etc., then, you know, the one with all the bells and whistles knocks the, the hitch things, the scopes, the freaking weights hanging off the end, etc., yada, yada, yeah. yada. Really right. Wheels, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, the, the one that, that locks in place so you can hold it there for 12 days um, is going to be fine, you know, is not going to look at a place. That, in a fantasy slash medieval slash whatever larp right is is not going to look right unless you pretty it up somehow to make it look different or magical mystical or what have you so to me it, it would be look at the larp you're going to play yeah the, does the bow look right in that, you know there's a nice sort of redwood bark or let's say it looks a bit like native american work in a futuristic one on it or in a what a fantasy setting, or would you want one that looks a bit more like a sort of an English bow or like a European recurve bow or something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Tom? I tend to look for a shield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're not a big fan. I'm sorry, Tom. I, I should mention that Tom's not really a big fan of bows. No, I'm not really a, a big fan of I never really used one, to be honest, mm. uh, but I've never really had the inclination to actually use one. I'd rather get stuck in. We're we're gonna have to get you over there, mate, to to yeah. to, to use use mine at some point. To the bow side. To the bow side. Bow side. Patrick, how, how about you? What what do you look for in in, in a bow? Uh, I look for said string wood, <laughs> a, yeah. Uh, arrow. Yeah. 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 Maybe good. a good recurve to it. You know, good, yeah. good, good pointy tip. If you're going to go the historical route, um, good yep. soft. Uh, foam one if you're going to go LARP because <laughs> apparently the really the, the, the really pointy tips are not good in LARP games they don't let you use them I have no idea why oh. uh, so no one's pimped my bow out no <laughs> no <laughs> although we could do that I mean I mean yeah. we are still to do when Rob and I can find some time to get together um, to actually do the the comparison between his pipe bow ever ever hear of pipe bows patrick i've not no oh these are awesome these are Mm. really clever it's basically tape taking uh piping that you would use for guttering etc and what have you and turning it into a bow and from what i can gather and what rob has told me so far is it works really bloody well um so good yeah so what we what we are going to be doing is a comparison to the pipe bow uh, and to my uh, nice redwood longbow that I've got. Yeah, that's nice. A, that's a, uh, hmm. mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't look anything special. No. But it, no, it, it but for something that is a good budget bow, if you want to just try a bow, yeah. you see if you like it, instead of plotting down like 50-odd quid up, if you're lucky. Oh, no, no, a, bow. a decent yeah. bow is a lot more than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you can get a really cheap pipe bow just to see if you like it or not. And if you do, you can advance then or just pimp that pipe bow out. <laughs> pimp my bow. <laughs> but also, they're, they're really great because I know a group in the Gavin, um, Mr. Patrick knows Gavin is the UK's biggest lap. It's got about 
3,000 players? 3,000, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, there are people who are putting together, trying to put together archery units in order to get over the cost of, say, having 20 people or 30 people with, with a bow. They're mm -hmm. building bows from PVC pipe, big PVC pipe, and they're building pipe bows too, in order to, to overcome the, the cost barrier to that. Nice. Yeah, that sounds great. It's, you know, using modern materials for yeah. to reimagine stuff. That's why not? Yeah, I mean, exactly. We him ourselves. And for mm. our training swords, we use nylon synthetic wasters. Yeah. And those are mm -hmm. about $100. That's compared to almost $300 for the cheap steel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, betters. <laughs> and 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 you you yeah. don't you don't want to use cheap steel anytime in anything. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, de def de definitely especially with a sword. I mean, yeah. God, I've seen so many accidents with people that go like, "Yeah, I bought this sword. It's only fifty quid," um, and uh, and then watch them swing it the first time, it freaking break at the pommel, yeah. you know, and then stick in their leg because they're Ooh. idiots. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just dangerous. Yeah, you know. So uh, so yeah. Okay. So so th there you go. Then Rob, that's what I look for in a bow. Uh, string, wood, Road. tension, Road. yeah. Tension. It's gonna hurt. I think it's gonna hurt on arrow. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's that's pretty much what I look for. That's fair enough. Oh. <laughs> so, what do you think? Suppose has to be a certain material? No, no, no. no. It's just wood, wood <laughs> or PVC or carbon fibre or metal or look along the soles and arrow. That's all we're asking for. Pretty much, as long as it chucks an arrow. And and I really hate crossbows as well. I don't know why I hate crossbows because crossbows are actually quite cool, but I don't like them in in a LARP. I, I, Why? I, yeah. How my mind works? Because they were really popular bows for a very long time. You know? Yeah. It's just how my okay. mind works. I mean, you All know. Right. No rhyme or reason to it, Tom. I mean, don't keep going on about it. Good God. I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> um, okay. Let's move on quickly then. Um, Old Town Festival. Is, it, is, is that one you put up in there, Rob? Is it? Yeah. I've just... Just wondering, have you guys been monitoring Old Town Festival over the last week or so? No. No. Oh, right. Have a look at the website. This is gonna, I, I did actually have a look at the website, and the website didn't load properly the first time. Oh. So I have to refresh. This is going to be fun for me to do. Hold the light, okay. Yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm off the search. I just mentioned that we all know that we look lap, so I traditionally fantasy based or historically based but old town takes that idea and sort of just yep throws it away <laughs> okay it doesn't work in opera very well <laughs> okay it doesn't work in opera <laughs> okay this looks kind of cool it's a post-apocalyptic festival it's a post-apocalyptic festival in poland where a town is built on on an airfield god damn poland you are so awesome with love i know <laughs> So and then, nice. within, then within that, you have hundreds of players, right? Uh, vehicles of shapes and sizes, and they build a post-apocalyptic town for the week. Oh, dude! If Although... you go to the website and say "see LARP," they yeah. get like a, a drone over the whole thing, and they do a little video. It's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's so cool. Right, and, and this to me is a thing that's now saying, you know what, fest laps or laps with hundreds or thousands of players. Yeah, I begin to think, you know, why does fantasy still hold sort of the dominance here when things like this are going down? And and whoever actually uh, uh, made this website must must be British because the world has collapsed. Fancy a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that's British, you're right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a squaddy, actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> right then, there's thousands of us, there's three of them. Right, fancy a, fancy a cigarette, and we, then we go kill the bastards, right? <laughs> that, that sounds like a bit of squaddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. Um, yeah, we'll be putting up... Uh, I think I we've already... We've, 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 yeah, we've, yeah, page of the I've seen week, that. I, 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 not I noticed it because, uh, well, somebody we know went... Um, I was whinging about luggage restrictions a lot. Who, who was that then? That's Mark Corduroy. 
Ah, Mark, right, okay. And I don't know if you've ever seen this post-apocalyptic kit, but it weighs a lot. Uh, yeah, I can imagine actually the yeah. that that stuff. Look at the, look, look, see, see this. This is where this is where right we miss a trick in this country. All right, and where yeah. where people are they short-sighted? Yeah, mm-hmm. look at this sponsorship. Yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 quite something, isn't it? All right, look at this sponsorship. Right, what who who sponsors anything we do? No one. Yeah. Sorry, Patrick. We forgot to give you the link. There you go, so you can have a look. So. Oh, I'm so sorry. Pat. I'm so sorry. Pat. <laughs> yeah, I just. We've actually been talking about this, and you can't see it. I'm so sorry. Yes, actually, yes, this thing has actually been sponsored by some really interesting names. Dear yeah. God, how far behind are we in love? We've and also lots of uh, lots of media um, involvement as well, and that just says to me that okay, we we really need to. Look at this, because if you want to do a big immersive event, uh, the tradition is over here that you know, players buy tickets, and tickets hopefully in CV pay for it. <laughs> Please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you really want to spend a lot of money on your lap, and this must be very, very expensive because of the size of the settlement, the number of custom-built vehicles going on here, Oh, God, there, yeah. must, there must be money coming from somewhere, and there is. It's, it's sponsored. Yeah, I mean, this is this is basically a seventy a seventy two hour freaking Mad Max uh, game, isn't it? Yeah, seventy two hours of live Mad Max. Wow! <laughs> sign me Not up. Not bad. Not bad. Sign just sign me up because. Um, oh, Karen won't mind. I'm out of the house again. The house is a bit tidier while I'm away, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> See, she's the one actively telling you to go oh hell yeah it's pretty cool in all fairness fair play it it does look awesome oh my, oh my word it's cheap as well shirt uh, how, how much is it da-da <laughs> well it was cheap it's already run it's for this year but hopefully I'm hoping it'll run again next year how much was it 49 euros. Bloody hell. Jesus Christ. two days. That's about two... That's about... Three, four days. <laughs> that's about two pounds fifty the way the frigging economy is going over there. <laughs> yeah, it's <did> <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. And, and of course, yeah, right. Typical. Yeah. When, when, when you do the see old town and scroll right to the bottom... Yeah. yeah. I saw. What? <laughs> First time lava? Just happened to be a couple of honey babes there. Yeah. Yeah, some very, very attractive women right at the thing. First time lava? You could potentially be with these, these people yeah, right it, here. With these people. You won't. You won't. Uh, but... uh, the Poles know how to sell a game. They do. They certainly do. So there you go, Patrick. What it what do you think of that then? That is pretty awesome just uh, <laughs> looking through the website right now the entire yeah, yeah isn't it post-apocalyptic setup it's fantastic yeah mm. it, it looks brilliant fair play i must be honest yeah cool right so um yeah we'll 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 put the link for that up in the show notes as well uh, also check up the, out the lot book website for the post that rob has already put up about old town old town festival um, and that does look absolutely awesome because you know you, you, 72 hours you wouldn't need to shower because if you did you'd look funny so out of place so out of place uh, cool right okay let's um, let's move on then to the events that are coming up uh, okay okay <clears throat> t- pronunciation g Genial, Genialis. Anybody get speak French? Genials. Genial G- du fromage. <laughs> oh, oui, uh, du fromage. Um, G N I A L E S. Anyway, French LARP convention, uh, October 29th to the 30th in Gay Paris. Why do we say Gay Paris? That makes no Paris. sense to me. Yeah, happy yeah, but Paris. Happy Paris. Happy okay. Paris. After yeah. you go there, you have a happy time. It's joyful. It's yeah. yay. Okay. You, 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 I assume you, that's why they they call it that. 
Fair enough. Um, without me clicking on the link, Rob, how, how much is it? Where is it? Okay, it's uh, it's in Paris. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yes. <laughs> is that just next to Cornwall? <laughs> uh, just across a bit. <laughs> It's a running joke, Patrick, that Rob has no geographical sense. <laughs> okay, it's uh, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pull that up here now because I I just lost the page myself. I'm so sorry. Join the event. There we go. Event. We direct notice. <laughs> <laughs> French. We're professional. Well, we're finding out, people. Here's some elevator music. Okay. Okay, so it's in French. It's all in French, right, okay. So we'll put the we'll put the link up in the show notes so you can actually go and find it and work out what it all is in French. There we go. Uh right, Nexus six, sounds like a phone to me. Uh is a laugh about paranoia and comrade ship in a hopeless totalitarian war. In a nutshell, it's Blade Runner meet Stalingrad. Actually, it sounds to me more like bloody uh, the game paranoia uh, at, yeah. at, at, at this moment. And if There's Tom... That now as well. Yeah, and if Tom, if you've never played paranoia, we oh, need to oh. sit down with a board game on that one, dude. Tell me you've, you've played the paranoia tabletop game. Nope. Oh! <laughs> oh we got to get you playing that one, like. It's the funniest thing you've ever played. Patrick, okay. have you, uh, Patrick, have you ever played the tabletop paranoia? Yes, I've played it. Yes! Yes, I have. Oh, yes. <laughs> it had me laughing so hard I almost wet myself. Um, oh, wow. the funniest role playing game ever. <laughs> right, mean, so so that is but, but, August August 19th, 21st, 2016, and August 26th to 28th. Wow, they are a bit greedy, aren't they? Uh, 2016. That's two run. That's really good. The game's going to be run one, in two sections. Well, no, two separate runs. So they're going to run it once. Yeah. Set one again. That's fab, you know, fair play. Uh, hats off to the, a, anybody that does that sort of thing. Uh, we will have that link as well up in the show notes for yeah. you. And when you go to the page, you'll find some really nice videos and slideshows as well, which will really help you out. Fantastic. Excellent. But Tom, we are so getting you playing Paranoia. Oh, I'm happy for it. I'm happy for it. Yeah. yeah no, no. You've got to play it. It's the funniest, funniest. funniest playing game ever. And, and it's a game you can do in a night. Yeah, yeah. The panel games don't last that long. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, usually because everybody dies. Um. <laughs> I like this game already. You usually get bumped off by the other players. In fact, it's almost the law. Um, so, um, so I think. So, is, is there anything else, guys? Anything else you want to add, Patrick? Hmm. No, not, nothing. I want. I want to add to this one. <laughs> <laughs> Most people know, have, have no idea. Just gonna let him uh, try it and see how it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I encourage people to have a good humor. We'll, we'll do our best to get along ourselves now. I think it's time. Mm. Like, yeah. We tried this. Yeah, most most definitely, it is it is time we we tried this. Um, so so a big thank you to Patrick. Thank you for coming along. Uh, it's been absolutely awesome talking to you. Uh, even though every now and then we couldn't quite hear you. Uh, <laughs> it's but, due to the webcam. It's fine. It's fine. You know that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Hey, this <laughs> is live, folks. Live to hard drive. Then I'll edit later. No, live to hard drive. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much for coming along, Patrick. No, thank you for having me. Cool. Right then. So, um, uh, and a, a big thank you to our lovely patrons uh, who make it a little bit easier to keep this show going. You help us to pay for the website, the bandwidth, and every now and then um, a little bit of kit to actually help us out, which is a fan tabby dozy. Uh, so, if you can contribute anything, uh, to the Patreon, just go across to patreon.com forward slash LARP book. And mm. if you can't, that's fine as well. Just do us a favor and tell everybody you meet, even random people in the street, I'm a poet and I didn't quite understand, um, that that we exist. Let them know that the LARP book podcast is there, the LARP book website is there, so they can come along and see the news and reviews and everything else and listen to our wonderful dulcet tones 
Um, so if you would like to get in contact with the show, just email lapbookshow at gmail.com. Is there a topic you would like us to discuss or something cool you saw or fancy writing an article for the website? Then email the show, lapbookshow at gmail.com. Uh, right then, super duper duper, let's do this. Press that button, Stu. So, uh, music was provided by bensound at bensound.com. Go across to the Patreon, as I said, patreon.com forward slash lapbook and help us out. Uh, we do have a shop up on Redbubble to get all of your wonderful LARP swag to do with the show. You know, mugs like this wonderful one that I have here, LARPbook, look at that, wow. Um, and t-shirts and hoodies and cases for your phones, your laptops, your iPads, whatever you've got, we've got it up there. Uh, you can listen to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Twitch, and Podbean. Just search for LARPbook, and you'll find it in your favorite podcatcher. As again, email the show, LARPbookshow at gmail.com. Uh, go across the website, LARPbook.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Just search for LARPbook. And don't forget to give us a five-star review on iTunes or any other site that you happen to see us on. Give us a review there, and it really, really helps us out. Um, again, thank you very much to Patrick. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you to uh, Robert and Tom, as always. This has been the show. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ta-ta. Good night.